dear students today we will be discussing about two very important aspects of wind energy conversion one is base equation so primarily we will be concerned about derivation of the base limit and then optimum tip speed ratio calculation so while deriving this base limit we need to take help of fundamental theory of design and operation of wind turbine which is primarily based on the first principle approach using conservation of mass and conservation of energy in wind stream the fundamental equation was first introduced by german engineer albert bates in 1919 now what could be the efficiency of conversion of wind turbine so if we consider a heat engine if source is at t1 and this is the heat engine and sink temperature may be t2 and we can produce work done okay so when heat is transferring from a source then we must have some kind of heat rejection and because of that we cannot have 100% efficiency in case of a heat engine right so that's how it is written the limited efficiency of a heat engine is caused by heat rejection to the environment so this part cannot be discarded right now what will happen to the wind turbine suppose we have three bladed system here and this is the pole maybe so we have free stream wind velocity maybe at u infinity so we cannot stop this wind speed at this condition so it should not be zero u infinity right so in order to convert wind energy to electricity wind has to flow through this wind turbine okay so we need to have some kind of braking system break the wind velocity right so the limited efficiency of wind turbine is caused by breaking of wind from its upstream speed if you consider v1 is the upstream velocity to its downstream velocity v2 we cannot have something like v2 is equal to 0 so of course fluid has to flow through this wind turbine so that's why it is written that cannot be stopped again there are some additional losses in efficiency for a particular or in a actual wind turbine which are caused by viscous and pressure drag on the rotor blades the swirl imparted to the air flow by the rotor the power losses in the transmission and electrical systems now while deriving the base limit we need to assume few information for example the wind rotor is an ideal energy converter what does it mean it means it does not possess a hub it possess an infinite number of rotor blades which do not result in any drag resistance to the wind flowing through them okay and also uniformity is assumed over whole area swept by the rotor and the speed of the air behind the rotor is considered to be axial again we have to consider ideal wind rotor so rotor may be of something like this okay and fluid stream will vary so it will be something like this it will grow this is the center this is v1 
S1 or maybe I will write A1 this at this condition will have V is the velocity and A is the cross sectional area and in the downstream we will have V2 is the velocity and A2 is the area. Okay. So, the ideal rotor is taken at rest and is placed in a moving fluid atmosphere. So, fluid is moving over the rotor and also we are assuming ideal condition of one dimensional steady incompressible and inviscid flow. Right? So, we will be interested to draw pressure and space variation in an ideal model of wind turbine as well, but this will come later on. So, the extraction of mechanical energy by the rotor occurs by reducing the kinetic energy of the air stream from upwind to the downwind. Okay. So, as you can see here V 2 is less than V 1 okay. and this may be equation 1 and also the cross sectional area increases from upwind to the downwind. Okay. So, that means A 2 is greater than A 1 this may be equation 2. Now, as I said before we have to take help of continuity equation first because what is the mass flow here, what is the mass flow here and what is the mass flow here. It should be constant mass product should be constant right. So, if we are interested about the continuity equation then what you can write this mass flow rate is rho a 1 v 1 which has to be equal to rho a v then rho a 2 v 2 and this has to be constant. Okay. So, this may be equation number 3 we can write and this expresses the fact that the mass flow rate is a constant along the wind stream. So, now if we write the Euler's theorem which gives the force exerted by the wind on the rotor that means for the force exerted by the wind on the rotor. So, how you can write it is F is equal to m into A. Again we can write m is in derivative form of A is rate of change of velocity is acceleration right. And again what you can write m by d t is something like d v. So, this is something like mass flow rate and then we can write in this form and we can use the expression here. So, mass flow rate is rho a and v and we have change in velocity v 1 minus v 2. So, f will be something like this. So, this may be equation number 4. So, if we consider 
the incremental work done, then how we can write it? D e is equal to f into d x considering incremental work done in the wind stream. So, this may be equation number 5. So, now if we substitute the value of f then we can expand d again we can have power content of the wind stream can also be calculated. The <coughs> power content of the wind stream may be defined as P is equal to d e by d t, rate of change of this incremental work done will be power. So, this f into d x by d t right. So, this d x by d t is nothing but velocity right. So, this is something like equation number 6. Okay. Now, if we use the equation 4, so by using equation 4, then P will transform to rho A V square, here V is there and uh, one more V is here, so it will be V square V 1 minus V 2. So, this is equation number 7. Okay. Again, we can find out the power by considering rate of change of kinetic energy of the wind stream in the upstream side and downstream side. Okay. So, this P again we can write like delta E to delta T that means, we will have rate of change of kinetic energy from upwind to the downwind m p t square divided by delta t. Okay. So, it can be written something like half because m by dt is m dot is a mass flow rate and it may be v 1 square minus v 2 square. So, this may be equation number 8. Okay. So, if we equalize these two equation 7 and 8 from that it can be concluded that we can have V is equal to V 1 plus V 2 by 2 okay. because V 1 cannot be equal to V 2. right? So, here again you can write like by substituting the value of m dot taking help of equation 3. So, it will be rho a v v 1 square minus v 2 square. Okay. So, maybe we can give the same equation name here 8. So, if we equalize equation 8 and 7 because these are power only. So, from that we can find out that V is equal to V 1 plus V 2 by 2. Okay. Very easily we can see it how this can be calculated. right? So, if this is the case then we can write down this equation of something like P is equal to rho A V square V 1 minus V 2. So, this may be equation number 9 as V is nothing but V 1 plus V 2 by 2. Right? Again we have force F it was rho A if we substitute this expression V 1 plus V 2 by 2 
then v 1 minus v 2. So, this is equation number 4, equation 4 implies. So, it will transform to half rho a v 1 square minus v 2 square. Okay. This may be equation 10 okay. and p we can write something like rho a v 1 plus v 2 divided by 2 whole square then v 1 minus v 2. Then if we take out 4, 1 by 4 it will be something like rho a v 1 square minus v 2 square is v 1 plus v 2. So, this may be equation number 11. Okay? So, these two equations are very, very important. Now, we will define a term called interference factor. It take care of the velocity ratios like downstream to the upstream. Okay? Defining interference factor, which is nothing but B, is the ratio of downstream wind speed to the upstream wind speed. Okay. Now, if we use this B in equation 10, then how it will look like? Equation 10 implies F is equal to half rho A, we can take out V 1 square, then it will be 1 minus B square because V2 square by V1 square will be B square. So, it will be equation 12 and extractable power which is P in terms of B that means equation 11 implies P is 1 by 4 rho A V1 square 1 minus b square then again v 1 it will be 1 plus b. Okay. So, we can simplify further to be 1 by 4 rho a v 1 cube 1 minus b square 1 plus b. So, this is equation number 13. Okay. So, what we have observed here this is the extractable power expression. So, here this power is a function of upwind stream velocity and interference factor. Okay. So, now what we will do? We will first try to understand like how much energy is contained in the wind. Then we will come back to this equation. 13. Okay. The kinetic power content of the undisturbed upstream wind stream with v is equal to v 1 and over a cross section A. That means, we can use w to represent this half rho A v 1 cube. So, this may be equation number 14. Okay. So, in order to find out the performance coefficient, what we need to use? The performance coefficient C 
Cp already this has been defined is P by W. So, this may be equation 15 we can write to S our derivation and if we use so using equation 13 and 14 C p will be 1 by 4 rho a b 1 cube 1 minus b square 1 plus b half of rho a b 1 cube. So, it will be something like 1 half of 1 minus b square then 1 plus b right this is equation number 16. So, from here we can conclude many things if b is equal to 1 then c p will be how much for your understanding this is something like v 2 by v 1 is 1 that means v 1 is equal to v 2. Okay. So, this 1 means this 0 c p will be 0 right. That means, the wind stream is undisturbed and leading to the performance coefficient of 0 right. So, if we consider b is 0 then what will happen c p will be 0 0.5 right. So, that means what v 2 by v 1 is 0 that means v 2 is 0 right. That means we have stopped the wind turbine then under that condition how much we are going to get the performance coefficient is 0.5 right. But we can do lot of calculations by varying v 1 by v 2 or v 2 by v 1 and it is found that if the value of b is equal to 1 by 3 then we can have C p of maximum okay. and this is we are going to demonstrate now okay. how we will get this value. So, we need to find out a condition for maximum performance. So, how are we doing? We are differentiating this expression C p with respect to b. Okay. So, d C p divided by d b is equal to half, this is like differentiation u v. So, 1 minus b square, then other part differentiation of 1 plus b is 1, then we will have 1 plus b then other part will be minus 2 b. Okay. So, if we simplify what we will get it will be 1 minus 2 b minus 3 b square and we will have half of 1 minus 3 b and 1 plus b this is equal to 0. Okay. So, we have two solutions now, two solutions 1 plus b is equal to 0 that means v 2 is equal to minus v 1 it is a trivial solution trivial solution and second solution this is the first solution and second solution will be 1 minus 3 b is equal to 0 that means b is equal to v 2 by v 1 which is equal to 1 by 3 that means v 2 is equal to v 1 by 3. Okay. This is a practical practical physical solution 
physical solution. That means, if the value of b is 1 by 3, then we are going to get the maximum value of C p, right, which is nothing but the base limit. Okay? So, this may be equation number 17. Right? So, if we need to find out the maximum value, the maximum value of the performance coefficient C p, which is nothing but 1 by 2, we are just substituting these values in the previous C p expression. So, 1 minus 1 by 3 square multiplied by 1 plus 1 by 3. So, this will be 16 by 27, which is nothing but 0 0.59. 259 or 59.26 percentage. This is the CP value. This is the base limit. That means, 59.26 percentage of wind energy can be converted by using a wind turbine and this is the maximum amount we can harvest from a wind by using a wind turbine. Okay? So, once we know this then we can find out the tip speed ratio and other parameters because these are required to characterize a wind machine. Now, if we have to understand the base limit that means no wind turbine could convert more than 59.3 percent of the kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical energy turning a rotor. And this is known as base limit and is the theoretical maximum coefficient of power for any wind turbine. So, if we have 100 percent energy if we consider and if a wind turbine then 40 percent will be spilled. right? So, for our understanding if we take a case like conversion to electricity if we consider 70 percent of base limit of the input wind energy we are trying to convert to electricity then how much equivalent C p will get that let us take this example. The wind turbine converts 70 percent of the base limit into electricity therefore, C p of this wind turbine could be 0.7 multiplied by 0.59 which is equal to 0.41. So, this wind turbine converts 41 percent of the available wind energy into electricity. So, straight away we got the idea and this is actually a pretty good coefficient of power. So, good wind turbines generally fall in the range of 35 to 45 percent C p value. right? So, this range we should keep in mind. And again we can have one more understanding say for example, an offshore wind turbine which is rated at 6 megawatt in 15 meter per second wind that is wind speed has a rotor blade diameter of 130 meters air density 1.23 kg per cubic meter. If we have to calculate C p if actual measurement is 5.93 then C p is found to be about 0 0.21 actual measurement is 5.93 megawatt. So, if we do the calculation the C p is found to be 0 0.21 and also we can conclude few things like larger the rotor and the larger the swept area then more energy it can capture. So, power output of a windmill 
depends on turbine design and its aerodynamic features that we should always keep in mind. Now, let us see how this maximum possible CP theoretically we can calculate. There are many researchers they have developed correlations to relate CP and tip speed ratio and one of the interesting correlations developed by Gliwert and his group it is something like CP is equal to 16 by 27 exponential of minus 0 0.358 lambda to the power of minus 1.2946 and he claims that this expression yields an upper bound on the values of CP regardless the type of wind machine. Also for propeller and multi-bladed rotors this is the expression where this component has been added sorry subtracted. So, what is this? This epsilon is, is the ratio of drag coefficient to the lift coefficient. So, that has been considered in case of propeller and multi bladed rotor, but this expression is whole good for all kind of wind turbines. And if we are dealing with propeller rotors having multi bladed with airfoil cross sections, then we can take values of epsilon from 0 0.008 to 0 0.02 and for multi blade rotor having curved plate as blades then this value is varies from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 and as per the observation they obtain numerical values of maximum possible power coefficient as a function of tip speed ratio. Let us see how they have plotted it. So, tip speed ratio in the x axis and power coefficient in the vertical axis and this dotted line is the Lancaster base limit sometimes we, we call it as Lancaster base limit as well and this line is the topmost line finally, it is going to meet the Lancaster base limit at infinity values of lambda. So, this is for this expression okay, and dotted line is for the base limit right. And if we consider this value at different values we can have different plots. So, in general what happens as tp speed ratio increases then power coefficient increases and then after some time it starts decreases as we increase the values of epsilon which take care of the drag to the left coefficient. So, higher the tip speed ratio the greater the maximum value of power coefficient the power coefficient approaches the Lancaster base limit as tip speed ratio approaches infinity that is what it is saying okay? it will meet at infinity and you can see the variation of power coefficient with respect to this parameter. Also, we can see the variation of power coefficient with tip speed ratio of various type of rotors. You can see here this is the Lancaster base limit which is 0.59 red dotted line is indicated and blue colored line is for the expression what we have discussed now and this is a whole good for all kind of rotors and you can see the comparison of all kind of rotors this is single bladed propeller type double bladed triple bladed propeller type then Darius type then Dutch machine then we have American wind turbine then Savonis rotor. So, what conclusions we can make out of this graph is power coefficient passes through a maximum in all the cases it passes through a maximum you can see here, 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 here at a particular value of tip speed ratio. So, here you consider tip speed ratio is about 5. So, here for 7 inch rotor it is about less than 1 and you can see 
for propeller turbine for two bladed turbines you will have more than 10 and one bladed turbine it will be more than 14. Except the propeller type the rise and fall of the power coefficient around the maximum value is quite rapid. So, here is a quite rapid when it is spread is more as the number of blade is reducing in case of propeller type wind turbine. The highest values of CPR obtained with the propeller type rotor which is seen in the figure. The multi blade type and seven years type are characterized by low values of tip speed ratio while the propeller type and derriere type are characterized by high values of tip speed ratio ranging from 4 to 8. So, that is what it is said. And we can see here like base limit ideal constant and actual wind turbine power coefficient as function of TSR. So, similarly we have drawn here this is the base limit and this is the constant tip speed ratio and you can see all those parameters cutting speed, cathode speed and then operating ranges and the variation of CP. So, maximum power extraction occur at the optimum TSR where the difference between the actual TSR and the line defined by the constant TSR is lowest that is what it is saying. So, this is dotted line and this is the actual power coefficient curve. So, this is the lowest where we can have maximum power extraction and these are the uncaptured wind. So, we cannot capture even though we have potential we cannot capture this energy of the wind here and this other part. So, again why you cannot capture all the energy there are other issues as well like there are different losses, frictional losses, finite wing size and turbine design losses. The wind turbine does not operate at the optimal TSR across each operating range of wind speed okay, because of this wind losses. So, we need to pay attention all those parameters as well while designing a wind turbine. So, now we will study the optimal TSR for maximum power extraction. So, let us consider a wind turbine. So, here what happens we will be defining two components that is the time taken for the disturbed wind to reestablish itself and the time required for the next blade to move into the location of the preceding blades. Suppose if we consider this blade is moving from position 1 to 2. Okay. So, next time this blade third blade will come here. Okay. So, this will rotate something like this. Okay. So, how much time will take to reach third blade to the position of the first blade. Okay. So, this is one time and then when as soon as it strikes on the blade say I am considering blade 1 then wind will be disturbed. Okay. At a certain point of time what happens this disturbance will be reestablished again it will be streamlined. So, that distance also we need to consider so that we can calculate what is the velocity and then time required. So, we are defining TW is S by V. So, S is the distance travel okay. so, V is the velocity and then T S is the time which is required for a this blade to move to this blade. Okay. So, what happens if T w is less than T s that means, some wind is unaffected okay. and if T w this part is more than T s then some wind is not allowed to float through the rotor. Okay. So, it will rotate at very high speed. Then for maximum power extraction to occur what we need to consider T s is approximately equal to T w. So, that is how we can use this expression and 
we can come up with a optimum speed which is equal to twice pi v by n s this is rotational speed. And then once you know this then we can find out the optimum tip speed ratio for maximum power extraction. So, this will be something like lambda optimal is omega r by v. So, this omega omega optimum has to be considered here. So, it will be twice pi by n into r by s. Now, if we have to study the effect of number of rotor blades on the tip speed ratio, then we need to consider the values of n like no if we vary the values of n then what will happen to the tip speed ratio. So, the smaller the number of rotor blades the faster the wind turbine must rotate to extract the maximum power from the wind. Okay. So, for example, single bladed turbine if we use then that has to rotate that very fast in order to provide the same power output compared to the three bladed system, but that will be lot of problematic because it will generate lot of vibration and friction. So, that is not encouraged. So, for an n bladed rotor it has empirically been observed that s which is the distance from the disturbance to the reestablished wind is approximately equal to the 50 percent of the rotor radius. So, that means s by r is equal to half 1 by 2. Okay. So, if we use this expression in the earlier expression then optimum tip speed ratio is found to be 4 pi by n. Okay. So, now if we sense the values of n then you can see the optimum tp speed ratio how it varies. So, if it is 1 then tp speed ratio will be 12.57 and if it is 2 n value is 2 then it is 6.28 and if it is 3 then it is 4.19. Of course, this can be augmented by considering the appropriate aerofoil design and other aspects what we have considered in terms of losses. So, let us solve a small problem to calculate the optimum energy extraction. We are considering a horizontal axis wind turbine which has to be installed at a location having free wind velocity of 14 meter per second the 66 meter diameter rotor has three blades attached to the hub. We need to find out the rotational speed of the turbine for optimal energy extraction. So, solution goes something like this. So, we have rotor diameter, rotor dia is 66 meter that means, radius we can consider 32 meter because it is d by 2 and u infinity is given as 14 meter per second and we will have number of blade is 3. Okay. So, tip speed ratio the tip speed ratio so for optimum output is something like lambda is equal to or approximately equal to 4 pi by n. So, here 4 into pi by 3. So, it will be approximately 4.188. Okay. So, tip speed ratio expression we know lambda is r into omega divided by u naught or u infinity which is 4.188 and this is 14 and r is 32 and we need to find out omega. So, omega is calculated to be 1.83 radian per second. 
So, if n is the rotor speed, and which is in rpm, then omega is twice pi n by 60. So, if we substitute the value of omega from here, we can find out what is the rotor speed, which is nothing but n is equal to 17.49 rpm. Or maybe 17 rpm. So, for optimum energy extraction, rotor speed should be maintained at approximately 17 rpm. Okay. Let us also solve quickly one very interesting problem. So, a propeller wind turbine is operated at a location having a wind speed of 30 kilometer per hour and it is rotating at 22 rpm and it has a rotor diameter of 64 meter. We need to calculate the power that the machine can extract from the wind if number 1 only wave this is wake rotation is considered and both wake rotation and effect of drag are considered. So, let us first see the parameters given to us is wind speed is given. So, it is 30 kilometer per hour. So, that means 30 into 10 cube divided by 3600 which is nothing but 8.33 meter per second and uh, n is given as 22 rpm. So, omega we can find out it is twice pi n by 60 which is equal to 2.3038 radian per second. Okay. So, we know tip speed ratio, tip speed ratio expression lambda is omega into r by u infinity. If we substitute these values, because here we have rotor diameter is given as 64, so radius will be 32 meter. Okay. So, if you substitute the values, now it will be 13.89. Okay. And for first case, we know the CP expression is 16 by 27 exponential of minus 0 0.3538 lambda to the power of 1.2946. Okay. So, if we substitute these values, so this is found to be 0 0.5857. Okay. So, already we know C p means p extracted divided by half rho a v cube. Right? So, from here we can find out what is p e, this is C p multiplied by half rho a v infinity cube. So, C p value is 0 0.5857 then half density of air maybe we can consider is 1.2 kg per cubic meter and for this case second case epsilon value we can consider as 0 0.012 okay this is 1.2 area is pi r square is 32, then velocity is 8.33 cube. So, this will give a value of 20.42 kilowatt. And for second case, 
we have the expression 16 by 27 and exponential will have minus 0 0.3538 lambda minus 1.2946 this minus will have epsilon multiplied lambda. So, we have all those values if we substitute it then this value is come out to be 0.419 and P e was the C p half rho a e infinity q. So, if you substitute it, it is found to be about 14.608 kilowatt. So, when you are considering the wake rotation and the effect of drag, then power extraction by the machine is reduced from 20 to 14.608. So, these are very basic calculations. So, we have shown how this can be calculated and what is optimum TV speed ratio for maximum power extraction okay, in the earlier problems and here we have considered wake and then what happens to the power extraction when there are some losses. And we can also see the variation of TV speed ratio with solidity. So, you can see here the TV speed ratio is shown in the horizontal axis and solidity is shown in the vertical axis. So, rotors with low TV speed ratios have high value of solidities which can be observed from here. So, here TV speed is low, but solidity is high, but here solidity is low at higher TV speed ratios. So, rotor with high TV speed ratios have low values of solidity. So, that way we can decide the kind of rotor required for a particular energy recovery system. Okay. So, we can summarize what we have discussed today. Primarily, we have analyzed the performance parameters and derived base limit and we have shown with calculation how to calculate the optimum TV speed ratio for maximization of power extraction. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.